Hey guys, and welcome back to another doll customizing video. In today's video, I will be continuing my Halloween series and showing you how I made a blue haired genie. But before we get into that, here is a look at my new and improved clown girl. I received a few comments saying that the hair seemed pretty simple for a clown girl and for it being very pink and long, and I agreed, so I redid it into these little buns and I added a few more details to her outfit. So with that out of the way, let's go ahead and get started. For the base of this doll, I used this Ever After High Briar Beauty doll. I bought this briar in a doll lot, which is pretty much why she's really dirty, but I really wanted to use her for this genie custom because I thought her tan skin would look really great with this blue hair that I wanted to use. The hair that I am using is from dollyhair.com in the shade Forget Me Not in the size long. So to start this custom, I use my q-tips and 100% pure acetone to remove her factory face. After completely removing her face, I use a sharp pair of scissors to cut off her hair. Next I use some pliers to pull out her hair plugs from the inside of her head. I ended up scratching her chin a little bit using the pliers, so I used a nail filer to try to file it down. Next, I use blue paint to paint the area on her head that I'm going to reroute. I did receive your guys' comments about getting longer pliers to pull out the plugs, which may have saved this doll from the scratches on her chin, but I had actually prepped this doll quite a bit ago, so it wasn't able to save her in time. After rerouting her head, I decided to add these pink and blonde bits to the front of her head just to add a little bit more variation. And no, I'm not giving her pigtails too, but this does help me make sure that her part is in the same place when I'm done repainting her face. And of course, to start this custom, I use my soft pink pastels to blush her cheeks, forehead, and nose. Next, I take a light brown watercolor pencil to draw in the top of her eye. And I will say right now that this is actually my first attempt at her face, but I ended up scrapping it about halfway through because I just couldn't deal with the problems that I had made. <laughs> Next, I take my light pink watercolor pencil to draw in her waterline. I think my biggest mistake for this first attempt was that the eyeliner was very thick and very short. I usually do very big eyes, so I think when I noticed the limited space, I just wasn't feeling it anymore. But I followed my same process, adding white to the eyes and adding the eye shine. Next, I take my same pink watercolor pencil to outline the shape of her lips. I think this face-up was just telling me to start over at this point because normally I don't have problems with the lips, but for some reason my colored pencils just didn't want to leave a mark. But I still continue trying to add a highlight to the upper part of her lip. And I also took this caramel watercolor pencil to add a bit of a shadow to her cupid's bow. After adding eyelashes, this was pretty much the point where I decided I needed to restart, but I still wanted to practice my eyebrows just in case, so I decided to do that before wiping her face off. I think I just wasn't in the zone that day when I was creating this doll because I decided to try to make these eyebrows work using this very vibrant blue pastel. And after getting a slight even layer of pastels, I decided to go in with a blue watercolor pencil to outline the shape of her brows. I decided to skip me redoing her face or else this video would be really long, but I am very happy with the second attempt. I think it is a lot better. And I decided to leave this in because I wanted to show you guys that even though I show you my best face ups, I still make mistakes. After a second layer of MSC, I take a dark brown watercolor pencil to add a bit of an ombre to the ends of her eyebrow. Next, I take a blue watercolor pencil to color the inner part of her eyebrow. Then I take a cream watercolor pencil to add the highlight underneath her brow. I also use it to add a highlight underneath the inner part of her eye. Then I take a white watercolor pencil to fill in her eye. Then I take a dark brown watercolor pencil to go over her top eyeliner. I also use this brown watercolor pencil to draw in her bottom eyeliner and also her bottom eyelashes. Yeah. 
I also took the same cream watercolor pencil to add a bit of a highlight to her bottom lashes. Next, using the same brown watercolor pencil, I draw in her top eyelashes. Then I take a blue watercolor pencil to outline her pupil and add the iris. I also use this blue to fill in the top half of her eye, but I leave the bottom half blank for a lighter shade of blue. And again, with the same cream watercolor pencil, I use it to highlight her top eyelashes. Next, I take my pink watercolor pencil to go over the shape of her lips. And with the cream watercolor pencil, I use it to highlight the top part of her lips and around the cupid's bow. And with the right side of her face done, I go ahead and do the left side of her face off camera. And with the third layer of MSC, I go ahead and re-blush her face. And mostly for this third layer, it's me going over the existing colors, but I did add the crease to her eye. And after the final spray of MSC, this is her face complete. And I actually just noticed that I didn't really film me doing her lips, but it's pretty much the same process that I do in previous videos. Next, I take this fuchsia acrylic paint to repaint some genie shoes and her nails. Next, moving on to her outfit, I decided to pull out some fabrics that I might use for this genie outfit, and I just kind of created what I wanted on the fly. <laughs> for her pants, I modified a pre-existing pattern of pants that I had into these genie pants, which basically, they are just a little bit wider at the legs to make them poofier. First, I start by sewing the pieces together at the top, leaving an opening for Velcro. Then, with right sides together, I sew the outside of the pants. I am not very good at explaining how I make these clothes, so if you guys want more in-depth tutorials, I suggest looking for some, but maybe I will make a tutorial in the future, but right now I will stick to doll customizing videos. With the base shape of the pants done, I decided to use the sheer fabric to add a bit of a cape around the pants. I also use this pink cotton fabric to add a waistband to the top of the pants. With the pants nearly complete, I decided to add a snap to the back of the pants to close them, and I also cut the sheer fabric at an angle. After cutting the sheer fabric, I decided to add this lace trim to the bottom. And these are her genie pants, pretty much complete. For this top, I decided to make a crop top, and I modified this pattern that I already had. I think it was for my fabric swap doll, and I modified it just to make it a little bit longer, but I think I actually ended up trimming it, so it didn't really make much sense at the end. And after connecting the pieces, I decided to glue it to the same fabric that I used for the pants. I left an edge around the fabric just so I can glue it down onto the blue fabric. With the top nearly complete, I added velcro to the back in order to close it, and I also added a lace trim to give an off-the-shoulder look. This is her outfit pretty much complete, and here I am trying it on just to make sure that it fits. And also bonus points for not spending money on any new fabrics. Since I have the outfit pretty much done, I decided to give her this blue bracelet and reattach her hands. I usually add all the final accessories before reattaching the head since I usually style the hairstyle before adding it back to the body. And I also give her back her repainted genie shoes. For this doll, I drew a lot of inspiration from this TV show that my little sister watches. It's called Shimmer and Shine. 
And in the show, the genies have very big ponytails with a little bit of side fringe, so that's why I decided to give this doll. I also trimmed and curled the front fangs, and I also added some braids to her ponytail. Next, very carefully, I reattach her head to her body. And yes, I do really want to emphasize that I am doing it carefully, but when it's sped up like this, it makes it seem like I'm doing it very aggressively, which I am not. And for a last minute accessory, I decided to make her this veil from an old bracelet and the sheer fabric I used for the skirt around her pants. I ended up not really using it for photos because it covered up her face. And since she's almost complete, I decided not to show you this, but I used Liquitex to gloss her lips and her waterline, and I used this blue iridescent Pearl X powder to add shine to her face. Next, I pick out some gems to use to accessorize her outfit. I used the round blue ones to add earrings and the pinks and the pearls for her face, and I used the butterflies to add to the skirt. And since her skirt had these butterflies, I decided to use this silver butterfly charm to add to her top. But with this, I am pretty much done. And here she is, all complete. I am really happy with how she turned out. I think my favorite part by far of this doll is the blue eyes with the blue hair. I don't normally match the eyes to the hair, but I think the blue being such a bright color really works for her. In the comments below, let me know what you guys really liked about this doll. If her outfit was made for a life-size person, would you guys wear this outfit? I was going to name this girl Butterfly Genie after adding the butterfly accessories, but I didn't want someone to think that she was part butterfly and then get mad that she wasn't, so I decided to just name her Genie. So here is my third Halloween costume girl all complete. If you had to dress up for Halloween as one of these dolls, who would you dress up as? The clown, the magician, or the genie? If you guys like this video, please leave a like, and if you are new, feel free to subscribe. If you guys want to see more photos of this genie or of my other customs, feel free to follow me on Instagram. But with this doll custom complete, I will see you guys next time.